sensational. Happy Sunday morning, everybody. It's just before 10 a.m. We are about to head to Portman Road for Ipswich versus Aston Villa. It's another daunting assignment for Ipswich. If they want the first win, they're going to have to get it against Champions League opposition. Town drop below the dreaded dotted line and into the bottom three as a result of yesterday's action. A point for Ipswich would take them out of the bottom three. Three points for Villa would take them joint top of the Premier League table after six games. Hour and a half down to Suffolk on a good day then for this two o'clock kickoff. Don't start me. Let's head for lovely Portman Road. Well, I said an hour and a half on a good day and an hour and a half later, here I am in Ipswich. Maybe today is a good day. Maybe that's a good omen, hey? It's the hope that kills you, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going to spend a little bit of time in there with my wonderful parents and then we'll get this show on the road. Right, down to the ground we go. Trying to look forward to this, but I, like a lot of Ipswich fans and a lot of fans of promoted teams up from the Championship and still trying to get my head round the chasm in quality you get and trying to match up being realistic going up against the team who's in the Champions League and still having that hope that Ipswich might just be able to get something out of this. Team news in for Ipswich and I think it's good. Calvin Phillips back in central midfield. A first start down the left-hand side for Jack Clark. As for Villa, where do you start? World Cup winner in goal, Martinez plays England hero Watkins up top. The impressive Rodgers and Ramsey off him and the hot hand off the bench. John Duran all there and ready to go. Bobbles about a bit. Archerson tries to knock it around the corner. Starts back in again. Dilap, first time, hits it low, left footed. Martinez goes down. It's on his near post. He could save it. Soft hands into the corner of the net. And again, it's to its lead early at Portman Road. And again, it's Liam Dilap, 1 0. Oh, wow. 14 gone. It's 1 1. Rogers has stuck it in the corner with his right foot. It is a terrible mistake by Jacob Greaves. He's had a great start to the season, but he's tried to clear that across his own box. Completely miskicked it. I think straight to Watkins. Rogers sticks it in the corner. Horrible goal. This is one bit of one. This is have responded really well since um, the equalising goal. Two hands maybe from the set play. Brilliant chance a minute ago there for Jack Clark. Right down the left, Leaf Davis cross. Clark probably should score with the header. Not really his thing, but still. Um, great game, by the way. My one. Well, a half hour gone. Villa still controlling things, kind of possession wise and tempo wise. Still 1 1. Villa not created a lot here, but you do feel it's coming, don't you? And you do feel a yellow card for Sam Morris is coming at some point as well. There is the second goal that Villa's control probably warrants. This has been very deep, very, very narrow a lot of the game. It's Bailey down the right-hand side, swings the cross in, hangs up in the air. Watkins is quality, rises up, heads it back across Mirage. 2-1 Villa. What a save. Free kick goes in from Davis. Calvin Phillips absolutely levers it from the edge of the box. And Martinez leaps to his left, tips it around the post. Brilliant save. That is incredible. Emmy Martinez, the Villa keeper, has just pulled off one of the best saves I think we've seen this season. Liam Delap is clear through, he doesn't do a lot wrong. Tries to put it low to the keeper's left. Out comes a leg from nowhere to tip it around the post. Martinez keeping Villa in it as 
we come up towards half time. Half time, Ipswich 1, Villa 2. Bit of a frustrating one, really, because but for a stupid mistake in their own penalty box and then some heroics from Emmy Martinez in the other penalty box, Ipswich would not be behind in this game. Villa have had lots of control, you have to admit that, but those penalty boxes are so, so key, and that is where this game is going to be won at the moment, rather than Villa controlling it with possession as they have. It'll be interesting to see um, what the bench is doing in the second half. The wind is not helpful, the stop-start nature, and the, uh, maybe the referee in a little bit. Everything is a foul today, it's one of those games, but um, we will see how it pans out in the second half. Half time, Ipswich 1, Villa 2. This is really pushing well at the start of the second half. Nice, aggressive pressing, getting men forward. We know this probably ends in one of two ways, but at the moment, looking positive for Ipswich possibly to be the next scorers in this game. 2 1 fill up. Well, we're at the hour mark now. It's just still giving it a pretty good go. Villa managing it fairly nicely. I'd assume this game's going to go into a different sort of phase very soon. And I assume we're going to go to the benches very soon too. 2-1 Villa. Well, it's the battle of the benches now. Um, Unai Emery has brought in John Garan and Jaden Phillips in. Kieran McKenna has brought in Wes Burns and Jack Taylor. We've got about 20 plus stoppage time to play where as this game go in 2-1 Villa. Oh, Liam Dillat, that is sensational. It's it on the counter, slid down the left-hand side. Dillat, 1v1, one one. step over, outside, left foot into the far corner, 2-2. Oh, what a counter, what a block by Torres, the Villa centre-back, slid into West. Burns, he had the goal at his mercy. Heart and mouth stuff there, free kick right on the edge of the box. Emi Buendia off the bench was going to take it with his first touch. Everything went silent, he blasted it over the bar. Still 2 2, 5 to play. Five minutes stoppage time, we've had a triple sub by Ipswich. A long range of Ibarkley, which Murich just about held. Is there anything more in this game? 2 2. <laughs> Wow, coming away from Portman Road at half time. I was a little bit frustrated to be honest and expecting maybe Aston Villa to take that game in the second half and do the thing that Champions League teams do and win. But Ipswich, I am very proud of in that second half. They were fantastic. Took the game to Villa, got the equalising goal, a double for Liam Delap really could have been a hat trick if it wasn't for that brilliant save by Martinez. And I just had a look at the um, second half stats on my phone. Ipswich were just better than Aston Villa in the second half. Absolutely brilliant stuff. That is exactly what town need in terms of home games, big, loud, raucous. Can you upset the big teams like Villa and grab a point here and there? Yes. Elephant in the room. Ipswich still are yet to win a game, but that is four draws in a row, four games unbeaten in the Premier League. They are above the dreaded dotted line, and I am optimistic that the win is going to come. Draws in that time away at Brighton and at home to Aston Villa are not to be sniffed at either. Um, in terms of Villa, we were kind of hoping that are they going to be a little bit tired, maybe with lots of Champions League action? And could the sort of hostile home crowd do something and, you know, get a little bit of wind behind you? And that's so it proved to be. Fantastic afternoon for Ipswich. Yes, they need to win some games soon, but there are lots of signs to say that that will happen. They're above the line now. In my opinion, there are lots of signs that they may stay above the line. They've got a whole course Ipswich, but plenty to be encouraged about. 2-2 down at Portman Road uh, today. If you were here, um, get in the comments, let me know your thoughts on the game. Ipswich fan, Villa fan, particularly Villa fans, um, who've seen lots of promoted teams go up against them. Be very interested to know your thoughts on that. Um, and yeah. I'm really pleased. Thanks everybody for watching. Um, smash the like, subscribe, 
and we'll see you all very soon.